the rise and fall of the world's most notorious private army. If you Google the term Blackwater, you'll find scandal after scandal, hit piece after hit piece. During the first decade of the War on Terror, Blackwater was the most divisive private military contractor, or PMC, which some referred to as private army mercenaries profiting from the second most expensive war in history. Hey everyone, welcome to our channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about the rise and fall of the world's most notorious private army, so stay with us till the end of this video. Eric Prince, a former Navy SEAL who the media refers to as a right-wing Christian conservative bankroller of President Bush and his allies, founded Blackwater. He made a lot of money providing mercenaries to the U.S. government. Putting politics aside for this video, let's just call him a war entrepreneur. After a deadly shootout involving Blackwater security contractors in 2007, the U.S. government, the media, and the general public all turned against Blackwater, branding them as war profiteers, war criminals, and bullies with no oversight. In the modern-day merchant of death, Blackwater was no more within a few years. But one thing I learned from Peter Thiel, the billionaire co-founder of PayPal, is that when everyone is on the same side of an issue, whether it's Silicon Valley, all leaning left, or Blackwater and all mercenaries are pure evil, there's probably a compelling argument on the other side that gets drowned out. According to its founder, Eric Prince, the story of Blackwater is one of the men taking bullets to protect the men who take the credit. A story of patriots whose names only become known when lawyers and politicians needed to blame someone for something. Was Black what are a group of patriotic heroes, or just a bunch of trigger-happy war profiteers? If you know anything about politicians, that sounds exactly like something they would do. This is the story of the world's most powerful private army's rise and fall. Blackwater was conceived as a concept, while Eric Prince was a Navy SEAL in the 1990s. The Soviet Union had just fallen, signaling the end of the Cold War, which also saw men enter the massive sums of money spent on the military by the U.S. government. The end of the Soviet Union also signaled the beginning of the Yugoslav Wars, which resulted in some heinous war crimes. Some Navy SEALs believed the conflict could have been avoided if the U.S. had kept a small peacekeeping force made up of U.S. Special Force soldiers on the ground. The issue was finding places to train. Even the Navy SEALs, America's most elite Special Forces unit, had a difficult time finding places Places to practice. The budget cuts were so severe that soldiers from various military branches were literally stacked on top of one another at shooting ranges, according to Eric Prince. If you want to be a pilot, you go to flight school. But if you want elite military training, you don't go to flight school. So the concept of Blackwater was born, combining a shooting range and a country club for Special Forces soldiers. And in 1997, in North Carolina, Blackwater was born named after the black swamp water they encountered on the land, and it grew to be the country's largest shooting range, with $400,000 in revenue. They never imagined they would ever send men overseas as private military contractors during the first year, and that was it. But then, 9-11 happened, and after the towers fell, talk turned to how to retaliate and how Blackwater could help. The resulting retaliation plan was dubbed Operation Enduring Freedom. The problem was that the CIA needed some important officials in Afghanistan who had bad reputations, but the CIA couldn't contact them because it wouldn't look good for them if the public found out. Blackwater, on the other hand, was not bound by any of these political constraints, so they teamed up with the CIA to recruit some of the most useful men in Afghanistan. Blackwater received no compensation for sharing their Rolodex with the CIA, and Eric Prince said the move was never intended to be a business decision, but it demonstrated to the CIA how private companies can assist the government's military and intelligence services. They knew Blackwater wanted to help, so the CIA offered them a way to do so. Meanwhile, the CIA was establishing bases all over Afghanistan. However, because they lacked the manpower to provide security to all the bases, the CIA offered a contract to guard the bases and provide post security, which entails standing at the gates and investigating the vehicles that arrive because Blackwater's training clients were all former Special Forces personnel with the necessary experience who wanted to assist. The humble beginnings of Blackwater's meteoric rise began when they won their first contract in the Middle East. Saddam Hussein is nowhere to be found, and his statue was toppled. As the U.S. invaded Iraq, the Iraqi government collapses, and the U.S. left forces to occupy most of the country. Then came a man named Paul Bremer, who was appointed as the Coalition Provisional Authority, or CPA, which was in charge of rebuilding Iraq. Essentially, he was the new temporary leader or dictator from the other side's perspective of Iraq, and with a stroke of a pen, Bremer became the most powerful man in the country. According to Bremer, the United States Secret Service had conducted 
conducted a security assessment of my security and concluded that I was the most threatened American official anywhere in the world. Because the Pentagon's protective services were overburdened at the time, who did they award the $21.3 million contract to protect the ambassador to? Blackwater began with a 36-man team and three small helicopters, paying each PMC $600 per day, $18,000 per month, or $216,000 per year, or roughly four times the average special forces salary. Brentwood was so despised that insurgents allegedly offered $30,000 for the body of Blackwater Guard, who in the end, Blackwater kept Grammar safe, and no one was hurt during the 11-month assignment. With a track record like that, Blackwater was soon guarding everyone. Basically, any official with a potential target on their back was protected by Blackwater PMCs. By mid-2004, they were working on a security contract for the Department of Defense, the State Department, and the CIA all over the world, and they were well-known in Washington, D.C. Their menacing bear pod logo, began to appear all over Iraq, even on the clothing of Iraqi civilians where soldiers were caught in a days-long firefight and were running out of ammo. The problem was that the military couldn't send a resupply mission because the drop zone was too dangerous, so they turned to Blackwater, who responded quickly and without any bureaucracy. With a Blackwater plane loaded with ammunition, it was on its way to the mountains to resupply the troops for free. After a few more of those missions, the Pentagon offered Blackwater a $34.8 million contract, making it official and worth more than all of their previous contracts combined, and this story exemplifies Blackwater's business model in war. The military needs things done quickly because it's a matter of life and death, but bureaucracy sometimes gets in the way, which is where PMCs come in. They're supposed to provide faster service, whether it's security construction or cheaper food services. The majority of the time, it doesn't end up being that much cheaper, but that is the concept as Eric Prince put it. Blackwater, I figured, would be the FedEx to the DOD's postal service. We didn't want to replace the military Military. We just wanted to make it more efficient and help patch up the inevitable logistical gaps that cropped up in the Pentagon. Planning the approach benefited the Pentagon, and it benefited our bottom line. After that, money from resupply contracts began to pour in from all directions, and the shooting range in North Carolina was in full swing and massively expanded. They expanded into all kinds of contracts all over the world, opening offices and subsidiaries and affiliates all over the globe. And between 2003 and 2004, the business grew 400% while government contracts contract spending soared. By 2005, it was estimated that every 40 cents spent by the U.S. government were spent on contracts with private companies, with the Department of Defense and the State Department being the biggest spenders. However, Blackwater would soon discover the drawbacks of relying on a single large customer for so much of your business. So now the question becomes, would you rather have a draft in which you, a friend or family member, is sent to war by force, or would you rather have a government outsource these roles and train professionals who want to do the job? Well, I would prefer the latter. And that's all for today, guys. Enlighten us with your thoughts. Share them in the comments below. And don't forget to hit subscribe to our channel and bring the bell icon for more amazing videos. And thank you for watching.